This podcast is brought to you by Place Pros, commercial and investment real estate. And Nicotour.boutique, your one stop shop for everything cool. Yeah, so, yeah, I like that audiobook concept right now. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it in the show too. Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, are we recording? Okay, we have Peter Lopez. You are a two-time publisher of the year winner here in Brevard, but you've also published a thousand plus yeah. books. Yes, you're a ghostwriter, an audiobook publishing genius. <laughs> 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 uh, but and you also, you know, you you you're a mint maker. You're founder of Mint Maker. Yeah. And uh, a No Excuses podcast. So yes. you are yeah. a brand of your own. Yeah. You know, I think when it comes to branding, right, the person has to be the face before they uh, introduce yeah. their product. So I've always been very, you know, I have an awesome partner, Mimi, and she runs the, pretty much we've started uh, Publify, but she likes to be in the background and, and operate everything. So I'm, I'm like the front person. So when you think about, Eli Musk, you think about Tesla. When you look at Steve Jobs, you think about Apple. And when you look at Bill Gates, you think about Microsoft. So if you're looking to establish a brand, people still buy from people. Uh -huh. People still trust people. Right. So that is very important when I'm talking to local celebrities, artists, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, your face has to be out there. Of course. So. So do you think uh, you, you kind of dabble in like branding too? I, yeah, I, I have to because being in the book industry, right? I, we've, I would say I, I, I managed and worked for a major publisher over 10 years. Okay. And we've had, I mean, collectively we've done two, 3,000 books. Wow. Uh, you, you, we always tell the author, it's important that your face is out there to tell the story, right? Yeah. There are pen names. There are authors that have pen names, which means they don't want to give their yeah. real uh, identity uh -huh. that you can understand so that you have to market it but it's important for you to to have that brand awareness of like my face has to be out there I have to talk about it and then people fam familiarize themselves with yeah it, you know absolutely the hard part is you know if you're a jerk it comes out if you're fake it comes out like social <laughs> yeah. media will expose who you really are like yeah like I filter I've, or no filter exactly exactly yeah the funniest thing Jesse about filters there man some people like they look like Janet Jackson on on social That's media why I won't and you do meet it. them and they look like Tito Jackson yeah you know? like <laughs> it's all good and nice when you're filtered out but yeah. like it's the horror of seeing someone in person and then yeah. them looking at you and being like yeah what, what? <laughs> <laughs> that that was 20 years ago i uh, you took that picture so yeah, and, and, and it's another thing update it's a constant update so people feel like well i don't like the way i look i don't like the way i feel you know what man it, that doesn't matter it, if, if you yeah. if you exude confidence if you believe in yourself that's the key like the belief system if you believe in yourself you believe in your brand that will come out. I, It'll be I agree. genuine. Yeah, we're all in meat suits, but it it, it, yeah. it just matters what's inside, and and anybody can get past the visuals if yeah. there's something interesting and important coming out of their mouth. Did you say meat suits? Meat suits. That is that's like the best. That is like, <laughs> dude. That is. Like, I've never heard that. You know, like we we don't get to choose, <laughs> right? But we're all like spirits. I was not us. gonna let that pass. I was like. <laughs> Did she say, me? I love that, Nico. Meat suits. Meat suits. <laughs> Can I use that one of these of days? Of course. Is that like it. coined phrase? No. Is that yours? Okay. <laughs> Hashtag meat suits. All right. You, you exclusively in the well, local uh, uh, Brevard. Uh, uh, I love it. Love yes, it. yes. Um, I want to know how you got into publishing because you don't really run into many publishers, especially here in Brevard. Y it, you don't. It, it, publishing, listen to this, right? And I always say this. It's like uh, uh, eighty nine percent of people want to write books. New York Times wrote a report. And I, if, if you follow yeah. me, it's no, like I'm everybody a, wants eighty nine percent of people want to write a book. Uh huh. Eighty nine. One percent actually publishes. People say everybody's publishing. I'm like, please shut up. Nobody. There's you know seven eight million people in the world. Only two three million books have been published. What is yeah. that like? Point one percent. Well, nobody really knows how to do it. That's so, the key. I was hoping you would shed some I'm light gonna, on I'm that I'm going to give you the secret sauce. Ooh. Guys, if you're listening right now, grab a pen, grab a paper. I give my stuff away. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Okay. One, how I got in, in, into the, 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 the publishing. And then two, I'll tell you why I give it away. Okay. 
I have been part of the technology sector for a lot of years. Like, I was one of the first um, um, companies to introduce DVD technology. Jesse, Ooh. we were talking about that uh, earlier. It's called Digital Versatile Disc. And my uh, chairman at the time, who became a mentor, the uh, Sprague family, but his name was Nolan Bushnell. Have you heard of Nolan Bushnell? No, I haven't. Have you heard of Chuck E. Cheese? Of course. Have you heard of Atari? Oh, yeah, my parents used to work for Atari. Get out of here. Yeah. Nolan Bushnell is the creative Atari, and then he birthed Chuck E. Cheese to have you know people playing the thing. So Nolan Bushnell is the king of Pong, the most iconic. Were Matt, you out in California? Cupertino, San Jose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was supposed to be that 9-11 plane, but that's a whole other book. So I was, I mean, I would travel a lot, and I got into technology doing DVD, mm -hmm. and, and we couldn't, we had a great, at that time, a great a CEO, but a poor CFO. Okay. And that's when everybody was going public. Jesse's like, we, 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 that's the dot com era. Yeah. Like in 90. Two? Oh, yeah. It was like eight, like 90. 90 that 90. early 90s. Oh. Yeah. You know, I would, you know, I, the story would go, we all drove in with Hondas <laughs> and came back with Ferraris. Yeah. And then left with, uh, you know, Datsuns. Like, it was like, <laughs> it was, you know, we, we took a company from like $3 a share to $49. Wow. And it dropped down to, you know, oh. three pennies. But that was technology. So we launched that. And then there was an employee that worked with, with, with Nolan Bush now. Okay. Very rebellious employee. Had his own rules. His name was Steve Jobs. Oh. Steve Jobs worked with, with Nolan Bush now. Oh, he worked with Atari. That. And and um, he branched off, and he created another technology. Uh, and part of the technology that we worked with was called SMO, Self Merchandising Object. What is that? You take a we would take a, a, a video game and chop it up into pieces. So instead of selling you a ninety nine dollar video game, we'll sell it to you in increments, and that is what we call iTunes today. So you know, oh. I could have been a trillionaire, but. It's okay. The cards You're here with different. us now. Exactly. So I was into <laughs> technology, uh, and then from technology, I started working for um, a, you know different financial things, software, and I ended up uh, moving to Florida in a company. Uh, I, w I worked a lot of years in the radio uh, industry. Oh, yeah? I even helped buy and sell radio stations. You remember back then it was oh, like wow. AM, and then you flip them into yeah. FM, and then you flip them into satellite. So flipping radio stations were very big wow. back then. Yeah, yeah. It was niche. huge. Like And... So that company had a, a, a publishing company. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I've been wanting to publish a book for a long time. And without, listen to me, okay, Nico and Jesse, I have the worst grammar. I got ADD. I can't spell to save my life. Same. But I didn't look at my limitations, right? Good, yes. And I was like, started working in this company the first year, the first year. They just transferred you over? Yep. The, yep. They was like, hey, just try it. Cool. I mean, you have, it's all about relationships, right? Of like course. sales is a transfer of emotions. Yeah. And if you if you believe someone so writing a book is about, you know, pushing your dreams across. So I I'm good at that. I tell people I'll throw you off the cliff, you can learn how to fly later. How are you right? so good at that? Like you say you come like I, I saw that you say you come from poverty. I or I grew up in the you South Bronx. You did. I grew up in the South Bronx. So I grew up in like I talk about the ghetto South Bronx, right? Like I like we were standing in the line in the line for free cheese, you know, um <laughs> Um, you know, uh, St. Anne's, Brook Avenue. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my man Larry Law and Pistol Pete. So it's like, like we was, it was, it was, gang life. And but I, my dad was a minister, very strict. Oh. You know, very, very like, like you better go to church. You know. Um, Do you think that's where you got like your? Yeah, yeah, definitely to. got that discipline. But but you still had to fight. You still had to hustle. Yeah. yeah. Like Jesse, it was like someone hits you, you don't hit back. You're in trouble. Yeah. They'll punk you. You know. So. You grew up in that in that like that that state fight of or like, flight. Yes, exactly. But I found out I had no flight and like no you know flight in me, so you got to fight. Yeah. So then people start respecting you and got like I'll I'll come. I used to work at City uh, uh, Citibank, and I'll be like two in the morning with a book bag and a suit, going into like the the, the projects, and nobody bothered me. Cause, yeah. But that that gave me that unstoppable mentality. Like I'm not gonna go to Wall Street. I'm not going to be bullied by nobody. If I survive this, you know, there's no way <laughs> some executive is going to tell me it can't be done. Do you still keep in touch with some of the kids like that were kind of that you grew up with? Maybe, I don't know, didn't have that mentality. I would say 80% of them are dead in jail. Yep. Uh, we I grew up during the crack epidemic. Yeah. A lot of them. I saw girls that were beautiful. I mean, look like 
beauty pageants, you know, that you were like in high school, like, yeah. wow, she's so beautiful. And then like three, three years later, they like withered away. So yeah. crack killed a lot of people. AIDS came in, mm -hmm. uh, killed a lot of friends and family. So I, it's oh. literally like, like, like a genocide. Yeah. It was like, and you a, escaped it all. Escaped it all. You know, I, and, and I still, I'm still close to family. I still got friends, but it's not like, it's a handful of people. And if, it, I remember I went, I went back to the Bronx and, and a lot of people are still stuck in the past. The worst thing you can do is, is dwelling in two things will keep you uh, stuck. Dwelling in the past yep. and then dwelling in the future, not knowing. So uh, you got to live in the present moment. Yep. I like looking at the, at the future. Staying in the past could keep you there. So I, I yeah. go there and I still see some people living in the past. So. so do you think that's their number one problem for not like doing what you did, getting out of it? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, well, it, it, they're product of their environment a lot of times. Of course. And it's, listen to me, man. It's like I, I I like the secret and I like, I like you know, you, you got to think and grow rich and you got to speak life. But there's some people in a certain environment matter what happens they're going to be stuck there like, yeah so i think some of them are product of that and no matter what happens it's hard to get them out there so there's just a few of us like the last of the mohicans that yeah. we can just crawl out of there and my job you know is to try to get back there and and um i'm actually doing a lot of books for the culture a lot of books for yeah. the hip-hop culture a lot of books for people that uh you know have been marginalized and, and been treating apart the publishing industry is 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 like the mafia it is a trillion, not a billion, a trillion dollar industry. If you add like Marvel Universe, Google, Facebook, they're all publishers. Right. right? Publishing is the tip of the scale. The the richest the company in the world is a publishing company. You know, it's Amazon started selling books out of their yard. So if you understand publishing as an artist, as a brand, even Jesse as what you're doing with the audiobooks, if you understand that part of publishing then you can own all your assets because eventually everything on the internet is public domain. Yeah. It's fair use. Mm -hmm. Like I can write a book right now on Jay Z. I can write a book on Warren Buffett. I don't need their permission because I, now I cannot write what they're saying today, but being that it was published before. So it's important for you to own your publishing assets. So no one pirates your stuff. Okay. All right. But and like you said, 80% of the public wants to write a book. We all have that dream. How does that come to realization? How much does it cost? Because I know you said, you know, to make money, you have to give some of your money yeah. up front. So there's 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 three ways of publishing, right? Okay. And and it's funny. I think the perception uh, people still call like, well, do I get an advance? I'm like, N uh, no. no. <laughs> you think you could, but it's okay. So. The 89% of people want to write books, 1% does, right? Yeah. It's hard to, to publish a book. People think it's easy. A lot of people go the self-publishing route, and yeah. then, God bless them, it's easy, it's free. Yeah. But you, you kind of go into some mistakes, and I'll tell you what that is. The first the first part of publishing is what we call traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. The hybrid. I mean, not the traditionals, the, the Penguin, the HarperCollins, yeah. you know, the Mafia, you know, the the, 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 the Antichrist. No, they're the good company. I love them. <laughs> um yeah, they're awesome, but okay. they're very important. They, 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 they maneuver and own. They're the ones that give you a 360 deal, and, uh -huh. and it's like a slave contract. They will own all your assets. They will give you an upfront. They will give you a, like a little upfront. You know, uh, uh, oh, but one of my friends. they'll own everything at the end of the day. They own in perpetuity. Your image and likeness, your oh, name. Oh, no. You think, it's funny, like people think, like they're like, no, no, you're, you're not that important. Maybe Trump, Obama, Oprah, you know, those people will get an exclusive admin distribution deal. Sure. But not anybody There's else. like point, point, point zero one of those people that get some of that. Everybody else has to give up uh, pretty much a 360 deal. Wow. If you say they don't, I, I call them a liar. Uh, I Don Robinson uh, uh, from Invogue, we talked about doing her book at one point. Like, she lost all her assets, right? Dave Chappelle at one point didn't even own Dave Chappelle. Right. So it's like it's like I, I I love this world of like no publishing owns everything. So that deal you have to give up a three sixty deal. You means everything, like a brand. Uh, oh my God! I had a, 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 a Mai's vote. She's like one of the most iconic uh, 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 YouTubers and podcasts. Um, Max Maxwell is like 
one of the biggest developers. He's doing some killer stuff in Dubai. Introduced me to his wife. She's got three million followers. And it was like the publisher wanted to even own some of her TikToks and all that. Publishers will do that. You need to do these many TikToks about us. You need to do, yeah. Oh. So you're working for them when you already have a brand. Right. So they'll do that. They'll own everything. And you'll get, if you're lucky, a six to eight percent royalty deal. Ryan Holiday has sold tens of millions of books, Ryan Holiday. And he has said in his podcast, he's finally recouped the $250,000 that he got oh, no. from his publisher 10 years ago. How he do may, you... You don't. Okay, but how are you doing it? Because I grew up in the South Bronx and I'm not scared of those guys. <laughs> I've gotten cease and desist letters from them. So that, that deal happens. It's yeah. not, if someone's going to give you an advanced they're going to own your assets. Okay. The second one where I've become very important in the field is called hybrid publishing. Okay. Hybrid publishing is not self-publishing. Is we create some type of joint venture partnership. Sometimes I'll take 30% of your rights, 30% of your royalties. You get 70%, and then I can shop, I can shop you uh, foreign rights. Um, we have great relationships with awesome managers, awesome you know, people that can – get you in front of celebrities, get you in front of podcasts, get you in front of Netflix. Now, you got to have a good story. Right. You just can't be some guy off the street. Um, but there are some great writers out there. So you find that talent. We come. We, we create some type of partnership. I'll put some money in it. You'll put some money in it. Okay. And we'll create some type of hybrid publishing where it's not look self is not, you know, we create. So it's like a deal. It's like a partnership. A partnership deal. And what, what does that look like? Give me like a ballpark figure of if someone's really serious about writing their story and, and you you agree with it, yep. you think it's there, you know, that you think it's going to work. The the most important part, the biggest expense in doing those deals is, is editing, right? Like Stephen King, right? It, Maybe the best writer we had since Ernest Hemingway. I'm not into his books, but he's the best conversational writer that's ever lived, right? He will write a story and put you, put you in the story, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you want to know about editing and writing, Stephen King's book on writing is the best. I don't really care for Stephen King's movies, but I, you know, I'm more of a, of a C.S. Lewis guy or, mm -hmm. or, or, you know. Um, but the cost of editing, that trumps the cost of printing? That too? costs the trump of everything. Ah. So you have to pay a lot of money for editing. You cannot just edit your book once. Don't trust your own editing. Don't trust your sister that has a master's. Right. Don't trust your friend that's a professor. Editing is a gift, okay? People, you, you know, you, uh, uh, when you give it to people that are smarter than you and they're professors, they're just going to correct you for grammar, punctuation, capitalization. Yeah. There's a flow to writing. Uh -huh. So a lot of times you're telling the story and you don't understand it. So these, ad these ghost writers, these development editors will t put you in that story, make you sound real, and make it flow. You're also a ghost writer. Yes. Are you an editor too? I, well, Lord help me. If, you don't, if I edit <laughs> your book, it would look like, it, okay. it'd be like three, three commas so, so per So publishing per and editing and... Ghostwriting are three different things. Yeah. You dabble in two of them. Ghostwriting is helping develop your story, developing your art, developing what is your brand, coming up with storylines. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So it's like a lot I of times ghostwriters ghost do two things. Okay. A real ghostwriter is not even, you don't even see their names in the book. Yeah, right. Yeah. Some ghostwriters get a percentage, uh, but their names are not on the book. But they definitely do the writing. They do a lot of the writing. Okay. Or they have a team of writers. Okay. A team of writers. Yeah. So it's like, okay, tell me about the book. Because uh, I can't write, but I could, I could definitely develop your story. Yeah. If I talk to you, we have a one-hour meeting. I'm like, this is what your story is. This is how it should come out. You These know are how the to chapters. extract exactly. the information. Exactly. And then the, the person tells some the writers, and the writers write it out. Exactly. And then the writers. So you want to go from your story, right, getting your story written, so let's say it's got to be developed right. So developmental editing is super important. After that, 95% of books need a line editing, substantive, like awkward word sentences, active passive words. You know, which is, which is, the, you know which is the most misused word? What? Was. Really? Was it past tense or was it present state of mind? So I don't know how to write that well. Yeah. So when I say was... Was I there or was I there now? Or was I there yesterday? <laughs> and a lot of times when we write that, it becomes very awkward. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, 
And it's funny, like I talk, I, I talk like I know these things. I've just been doing these for 10 years, but what I do is I connect you with an expert. Okay. Guys, true wisdom is knowing your limitations. Yeah. It, 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 there's like 1.0.1 people that make money writing. Books. Yeah, yeah. There's. I've you know. actually gone the uh, self-publishing route. Awesome. I, I um, helped my daughter publish like a cookbook, mm. and we wrote it through like Chat GPT. So I just wanted to get a sort of awareness of how it What's works. About Chat GPT. Yeah. Do you want to talk about? Yes. Chat GPT? There's there's a war going on with tell the robots. Me, tell me. I know. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I I know what I hear, but I'm like, how bad can this get? So, let's. So you go from editing. I would say a good hybrid contract yeah should be about uh it, it should be between 20 and 40,000 okay you know um um scribe media when they did the the deal with with David Goggins scribe media is very similar to us okay they've gone through ups and downs like everybody but they kind of gave a deal uh and they shared on the royalties and there was some upfront cost but David Goggins owns everything David Goggins was going to get two hundred fifty thousand dollars from a major publisher. And they would have owned everything. The yeah. dude has sold millions of pounds. So he's a great. We talked about him. Okay. So you get that. You get it published. Hybrid. The third one is self-publishing. Guys, who cares? Get your book done. You're part of the one percent. Yeah. Right. Oh, am I? <laughs> you got a book done for your daughter. You know how yeah. awesome that is. You, I'm. Yeah. It's I don't a legacy know. for the next thousand years. It almost years. feels like since everybody can do it, though, it's no longer special. Like unless you do have that penguin or. Yeah. So, like, I don't think people really know. I don't know. And I'm and glad you're here educating us. When you go that route, you know, it's always good to, like, have someone give you some advice how to do it. But yeah. you got it out. Who cares? Okay. Right? Who Like, it's like, you got, I'm, pro that, I'm proud of you. you got, book for your daughter. You know how cool that is? Yeah, I know. I Me and my cool. mom did a book together. So self-publishing is a route. Um, but you're not going to see the return. No. Can you guarantee the return? Or maybe not guarantee, but can you be confident that if someone, can, yeah, yeah, like you won't make the deal unless you're confident that this book will sell. Two things happen when you write a book. One, you have to invest a lot of money to make a lot of money back. Yep. Okay. Marketing, branding is important. Marketing does not equate to sales. It equates to expertise and exposure. Mm -hmm. But there's like funnels and ways of going around Amazon, because Amazon is 85% of the buying habits. So people are gonna buy your book on Amazon. The problem is yeah. Amazon will give you nobody's email, nobody's phone. So let's say a thousand people buy your book on Amazon. Great, you might make $2. Yeah, right? yeah. Cool, uh, <laughs> your bestseller, but you, you own no data. I'd rather 100 people buy my book directly from me yeah. than 1,000 people buy the book on Amazon. Right. Why? Because I don't, yeah. I'll data. Da yeah. Data is gold. Yeah. So if I have 100 emails of their name, their phone number. Uh, That's what they all want, my right? My, 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 my shout out to my monthly millionaire guys. Like, it's $16. Like, an email's a dollar. A phone is uh, 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 five dollars, and the dress is ten dollars. Wow, that's that's the return you get. Yeah. So let's say you blasting emails. Uh, I'm gonna be at a book signing. I'm giving away this. You have that data, guys. Work on your email list. Like like it's the old people still do that. I hear this all the time, but we're we're so bad at it. Yeah. So so that that becomes so self publishing is another route that you can take, and and a lot of times. It, 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 you know, Nico, I'll tell them we're not the company for you. I'll, yeah. But I have never, I'm not that important. I'm not that type of guy. Like, I feel like you, 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 you good to people, you bless people, I'll come back to you. Yeah. So I'm like, do this, right? But do it this way. Don't go that way. And yeah. like, if you're going to self publish, do this. And then you give but, them advice. But you know, you know what I've learned, Jesse, and this is the coolest part it's DIY to DIFM. I tell everybody how to do it. You know what they tell me? Nah, you need to do it for me. Because I, if people say they don't got money. Oh, no, 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 no. You got money. You just don't got money to invest in your dreams because yeah. dreams cost a lot of money. Yep. You know, you got money to go on a $5,000 vacation. You got money to buy Starbucks every day, a $5 cup, and you add that, what's that, $2,500? Yep. So they got, they got money until they have to invest. So I, I tell them, invest this way and do that. So I think it gets real for people. They get scared. The best investment you can make is, is in yourself. Yeah. 
That's it. That's the biggest ROI you'll get. Yeah. If you make an investment in yourself, it's the best ROI you get. People are like investing on other people. You know, every time now, like I use my own brand. I'm not spending money on Gucci or Nike. I buy my own T-shirts with my own name on it. I'm the brand, right? Okay. So when you see me, you're like, what's that? And it's like, I'll be the billboard. I'm not going to advertise. It's funny. Like people got these, these Fendi bags and all that, but yeah. it don't matter. Like it's nothing like having your own brand. Right. It's, it's just feels right. Good, so. And and we're we live in a world where like now you you almost have to brand yourself. If you're going to put yourself out there, you can't do it so frivolously. I mean, of course you can, but like if you're taking the time out to yeah. whether it's educate people or give them a freaking makeup tutorial, yeah. you have to show up, right? You have to show up. I like that. I like that. Yeah. So do you guys want to talk about AI? Yes, let's talk about that. Any questions about AI? So, go ahead. Well, I was like, um, I know you did the NFT stuff. Yeah. NFTs, <laughs> Jesse, we went in a podcast like two years ago talking about that. I feel like it went this and then yeah. and then it stopped. NFT, let me, let, me, let me explain this. Everybody started hanging out with the gorillas and monkeys and apes, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like a circus. And I think that was what confused people, paying like, what is a, a million dollars for a art? monkey? Yeah. That I can screenshot and also hang up on my wall. Like I think people Not didn't really that. It, well, that's the concept. Yeah, people didn't understand owning something digitally. Yeah, and it's still important. NFTs and if you understand the back end software value to it, it's still going to be a game changer. I said something on one of my 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 my, my um, uh, posts. It, once once people understand NFT and a AI, it'll yeah. be the best integration because NFTs is a digital form of authenticity. It's like a stamp that says it's you. Okay. And it's and it's there forever. But no, I think people like me have trouble valuing that. Yeah. Like, what's the value in a in a in a digital fingerprint, right? Okay. So let's good question. Let's say some your daughter's uh, cookbook, right? Yeah. Somebody says, "Hey, I want to buy." A recipe right how would they buy a recipe they have to like try to contact you they can't buy it from your book you know you do you do you have a QR code right that NFT you can literally like f figure it out that they could buy it and there's a subscription base and they'll get like the recipe in their house they might even get the, the plate but why know? not just buy the book be oh no you could buy the book but w within the book you can sell seven eight different variations of the book so think about this. When you buy one book, you get one royalty. Uh huh. If you create an NFT, I can't believe I'm talking about NFTs, but it's I important. Know. It's a software. If you buy one, if you create an NFT, I'm talking about the software, not NFTs. That it is, it could be perpetual. So one, you could have one book that'll give you seven, eight different type of royalties. Because every time that book is sold to somebody else, it's you get a cut a, of that. A cut of that. Okay. So the thing with AI right now, so NFTs, right? So I, I'm still dabbling in that, but yeah. you know, you have to pivot. And we saw AI become like huge. And I saw that from the from from AI has been around a long time. Jasper, uh, uh, people are getting to know that yeah, AI has yeah. been around for years, years right now. But because of Eli Musk that found the Chat GPT, and then of course, I think sold his options to. Microsoft, now Microsoft is owns ChatGPT and then Bard owns Google. That's going to be like like an Armageddon war like on data, right? Yeah. Once Google figures it out, everyone's in trouble. Okay? They haven't yet. I thought they did come up with something. They did. They yeah. came out with Bard. Um, oh, Bard. Yeah, but it's you know, it's it's it, 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 ChatGPT is so big right now. It's yeah. It's the brand awareness, right? Yeah. Um, but this is the problem. Amazon is undefeated, right? There are people that are creating AI-generated books. So far, there has been tens of thousands of books that have been kicked out of Amazon. Wait, what? Because they're GPT. A, 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 AI, if you, it's it's called plagiarism. It's what? you're pulling from data that's already published. So every time, like Mimi, my partner, she uploads a book on Amazon. It says, "Did you use AI?" But then you book. can check off yes. Yes. And you, if you think you're smart, right? You think you're smart. You're like, no, I didn't. Well, one, you're lying. Yeah, you don't want to lie. Two, they're going to find you out. 
three, they're going to kick you out. Wait, I didn't know that you can't write a book with chat GPT and publish it on Amazon. Because, I mean, that's what we did for, for the cookbook. You did. I did. But eventually, there will be a war, and and they're going to start disbanding a lot. They've been doing it lately. Um, chat, I think ChatGPT wrote a contract with Politico because anything anything that, that you buy write from ChatGPT it's from a source that's already taken. So right. that's that's copyright infringements, trademark infringements, plagiarism infringement. But it's all I mean you could ask ChatGPT to rewrite it in a more casual style or you know whatever it is. It it's, I mean, it's it, newly generated. I mean that's just like saying that you're plagiarizing by looking in an encyclopedia, which is how we used to write reports. When exactly, we were kids. yeah, that's true, right? right? People, people <laughs> forgot about those days. There's an encyclopedia of Britannica, or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. <laughs> so I'm not against ChatGPT. I'm telling people you have to know how to use it right. Of course. Because if you're using uh, ChatGPT to publish books, and I'm telling you, they're all out there. People publishing books, they're gonna start being chopped down. I, I've been in the publishing industry for many years uh they'll google is not going to support chat gpt books amazon is not going to support like there's going to be like there's going to be like we're going to be the first to market how are they going to be able to know is it like written in the code like how will they know they're gonna know how will they know they're gonna know <laughs> there's okay <laughs> we i i, I I use ChatGPT for research, right? I'm writing a book, right? I'm I'm, I'm talking to the ghostwriter, and I'm talking about uh, um, um, this awesome, his name is James. You know, when he was four years old, his father passed away. And I'm like, first of all, what is it to be four years old? So I asked ChatGPT, how is it? What are the emotions of a four-year-old? How does a four-year-old act? I've had, I got three boys. Yeah, you. I totally know. forgot what they were for. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so... And it's like, oh, a four-year-old does this. He starts to understand his emotions. He starts to understand sound. And you want to incorporate that in the book. But we did not copy and paste that into the document. No, you use that as a resource. You use that as a research. And a resource like Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah. You know, the lexicon or whatever. You, you use that. But you're that, not taking the words verbatim is what you're saying. You use the word verbatim then as words that have been used before and they've been published before. ChatGPT is only pulling data that's already been published. Now, it is not creating new data. It's taking data that's already been written. So even music, people that are using ChatGPT to mix music, yeah. that it, that's been like a lot of those 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 things are taken away. So I'm telling people use it for research. You publish a book with ChatGPT, cool. You're right. But there's I don't 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 get it wrong. No, no. They're going to go against the big guys, right? The big publishers that are doing that. There's a, I mean, we we Well, I, I mean, I don't think you could actually ChatGPT is good for generating quick things, but but like you said, you have to edit and re-edit and re-edit. There's no way that it's gonna spit out what you really yeah. want oh, on no, the no, first no, round no. anyway. They're, they're like words that ChatGPT uses. Like, it's funny, they'll find, I, there's so many I could say and I don't wanna sound like, like I'm a, I understand AI, I have it on my phone. Yeah. And it's not just ChatGPT, there's so many other, AI softwares that are way better. Really? There are AI softwares that humanize your voice, but it's just. What do you mean humanize your voice? They they take your they take what's written on ChatGPT and they oh. re-edit it and say make it sound human. But it's I tell people, you have to say yes, and if you say no, so that means they will. So when you uploaded your book, did it, did did it say was it AI generated? I think I remember clicking and that, yes. and I actually even credited. The chat GPT bot. I even asked the chat GPT bot, you know, cool. I'm going to credit you. What do you want to be named? And he told me. <laughs> what was his name? Antichrist? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Terminator. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. I forget, but it's I, on there. I use chat GPT for research. Like I use, like I use data, like I, you know, newspaper, yeah. but I don't use it to publish because people, you will never replicate the human voice, the human experience. Well, yeah. No, 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 um, no, no, no. But with you I mean I got away with it because I was looking for uh recipes man, childlike recipes that and was we awesome put it on Canva did. and we made it look all kid like like you know I asked for her advice because she I wanted something for awesome her that is no I don't that is awesome like, I just wanted to play with 
all the elements, the and, Canva, and me, the chat GPT. Me the having this Amazon. chat GPT rant with you has nothing to do with you doing the book. No, I don't feel that it's, way either. I'm just awesome. like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I, no. A, I didn't know. But B, I do remember che checking the box. And, yeah. Um, but it makes sense. It makes sense because yeah. uh, we could all get carried away with yeah. this AI thing. Yeah. Um, outside of writing, what do you make of it? Uh, AI? Yeah. Data. It, it gives me the best information quick. Are it's you on the 4.0? Do you like pay yeah. for it? Okay. Yeah. It's better than it's better than Google search engine. Of course. It'll give me so much more information. Uh, uh, it, it, it's eventually just going to pull. I, you know, the two biggest search engines in the world is Google and YouTube. Yeah. Of course, they're owned by Alphabet. Alphabet owns both of them. So eventually, you know, when you understand how data is used, uh, as much as ChatGPT wants, and they're going, they're using, um, is it Explorer? Which is the other uh, browser? Bing, or I don't know which, yeah. their own browser, right? Oh, Microsoft. Microsoft, whatever. Um, that's like 3% of people. Everyone's still on Google, right? Chrome. Yeah, yeah. Chrome, yeah. It's like, so, so Google's going to be like, oh, you want our data? Well, you're not going to get it. Or they're going to charge. Like, it's going to be something like you can't pull data from Google if you're using chat. Oh. There's going to be. But right now, is chat GBT pulling from everything everybody. that is everything out there on your computer's internet? Period. Yep. Google. And then Google, you know, they filter for their own good. Yeah. Right. Yep. If you pay them money, they will put your website on the top hits. Or exactly. Whatever, right. Yeah. Or, I mean, it's funny. Like, I. I, I did a thing about making sure you're verified on Google, your business is verifying Google, and that's helped us out. Like, we've the last like 10 deals, I think five are just local organic people. Like, I don't know whether, like, hey, you're here and we're groundswell and they show up in the office. Yeah. It's because we're, we're prevalent on Google, making sure our reviews are right. We keep our data up. Like, Google is like the new shopping mall, like, it's the new yeah. office, right? Yeah. Back then, it's like, Oh, there's the mall. There's there's your store. Oh, there's there's the, the I could go to your office. That's like them going to your office. Yeah, no, so you, that's important. You need so, a search. so I think ChatGPT and and AI, it's not going anywhere. If you learn how to use it right, you're gonna do well. If you learn how to use it wrong, you're gonna get in trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah, so. of course. Um, what is your affiliation with Groundswell? Groundswell, it is one of the coolest incubators that I've ever seen. Um, we're actually uh, doing a lot more. Uh, uh, connections with them we're just a publishing company yeah they're a technology driver like right. a lot of great companies are coming out of there yeah uh, they're like a non-profit so they I help just incubate with them, business them and i yeah. investigated what exactly they do over there so i have a good understanding um are you are you I'm, part I'm, of the groundswell i'm not part of them but but we're, we're, we're meeting about trying to get their 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 awareness out more yeah because that's what we do we 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 give we 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 make brands. We give expertise to brands, ah. right? So, um, so we're meeting with them. I think coming up Friday to make sure they're visible in Brevard. Like Brevard needs more groundswell, yeah, more incubators that are serious, that are invested, that are really helping local. Uh, companies succeed so they help you do everything yeah they do they, they're they, very and I, they have a big lot shout of out to fun tools and uh the the prototype lab there yeah. like it's kind of amazing the way that they there's grew. like a hundred businesses there and it's, it's such a great place to hang out at and speak to yeah. i'm just <laughs> are you going in there and speaking yeah yeah i've done i've done, yeah, I've done a lot a lot of events there yeah I mean, and at the end of the day let me tell you son um um publishing books is the greatest technology ever invented like I don't care what, books are the tip of the iceberg, and you, people still need books to yeah. do everything. So that's where it's important for us to be there, and then also publishing, right? So publishing rights are the most important rights in the world. Publishing yeah. rights. You got to sign the right contract. Not copyright, not trademark, not you know, not not NDAs. The biggest, most important rights are publishing rights. If you understand what publishing rights are. And you, as a person, mm -hmm. understand that, then you own every asset that belongs to you. So that's where companies need to do that. I even tell companies, create your own publishing house. And everything you publish, all your articles, all your research, is under your own publishing house. Oh. It's like things they got to understand. Yeah, that. because people think publishing, they just think books. Yes. But you you are. You're publishing blogs. You're publishing YouTube. You're YouTube publishing data. posts, even. 
Interesting. Everybody that's here now should just create a little publishing company, get an LLC, put it under there. Even your audiobook company, right? Just it's a publishing company, and I'm an audiobook publisher. Uh, you know, I'm Nico, the the celebrity. You know, uh, <laughs> mom book. You know, <laughs> doing great things, and I have my own publishing company. When you when you went on Kindle, did you create your own publishing house, or you went under Kindle? Um, I don't really yeah. know. Good advice of the future. Anyone doing self publishing? Create your own publishing house, and don't just upload it on Kindle. Upload it through your publishing through house. The publishing house. I think people get overwhelmed. They you do. know, especially when you're like, you've got to, even me, like I've been telling my husband, we got to create an LLC to like umbrella yeah. what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but here we are. It's crazy. Like you go on Sunbiz, it's a hundred dollars. A hundred. Yeah. To do an LLC. But people pay like, if you don't know, you pay more, right? Yeah. Like I, I can change the, my own oil in my car. But do I want to do that? Do I want to go on YouTube and try to change the oil in my car? No. I pay someone $50 to do it. To do it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so you got to pay the expert because if not, it'll cost you more. Yeah. So some people will go on these legal Zoom and pay five hundred dollars when yeah. you can literally just do it for a hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Get your LLC and get your EIN for free. Oh. But it's like no one knows. No one. I and, mean, and, and you know, no, yeah, this is no the thing: knows. people are selfish with data and information. Like I give it away, and people eventually trust me and pay me for. It. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. I would trust you. You seem yeah. like a good guide. That's it. Like you know what you're doing. Um, I saw this guy on your feed who actually branded his book in a shoebox. Listen, it's called I think uh, freesneakerbook.com. Tommy. Yeah. Tommy is. I gotta make sure I, I got the right link. Maybe maybe we'll put it on the thing. Yeah. He's giving away a free book. He is. Tommy Urban D is one of the most. I've worked with a bunch of authors. Okay. He's one of the most creative, innovative authors I've ever worked with. We've, we've done a lot of projects together. He's all about a book in the box. He's all yeah. about the brand. So if you see it's the, I mean, if you put the, the link up, he did a book about sneaker culture, right? Mm -hmm. And and so he did a sneaker box. Yeah. And he put the shoe in, in the, the box, box. Even got the little tissue the little and wrapping. everything. It's, and so now when you buy the book you actually buy the box so it's like a sneaker box of course. then he also sells custom sneakers so he'll he'll have maybe a thousand people buy the free book another thousand like oh. you know hey i want the sneaker that's this it's just his branding is on a thousand yeah i you know <laughs> i i'm very good in, in books but i've learned a lot from him so we've done a lot of projects that's why i give him a lot of i mean shout out to to uh, 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 Urban D, Tommy is an awesome dude, man. So, like, where are these authors at? Are they here in Brevard, or are you catching them from all sorts of places? You know what's crazy? We just got inducted to the Hall of Fame in Brevard. I, yes, three time. Uh, three uh, time now. Three time. Not what? I don't even know who nominated us. Um, but we like to serve the community. Yeah, we're finally like usually our authors are all around the world. You know. Uh, Maybe Tampa, okay. Georgia, California. I I was not. I don't think I've published a Melbourne author or a Brevard author. Yeah, but the last few years we've been getting a lot of them. And and what that, do you look for in an author? Authenticity. Authenticity. Real. I think Real. a lot of people that are listening now, you know, might be asking themselves that question. You know, and 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 don't don't act too important. Okay. okay? When I get an author, hello, please, guys. Okay, stop this. Stop. Stop. When I get an author that tells me, you need to sign an NDA to read my book. My book is super important. I don't want no one to steal it. I'm like, please, <laughs> you did not write War and Peace. You don't, you don't, you, there's, there, whatever you're going to write has been written before. If you have a humble approach to your book and you want to tell your story to change lives, yeah. it's worth it. But when I get people saying, no, this book is, and, and don't steal my title. First of all, titles are a copywritten. Right. So you if can, you have a title, I can use it. It doesn't matter, it. yeah. I mean, my book is called Excuses, Excuses. The book was done 10 years ago, and there's 100 titles of Excuses, Excuses. So, you know, when they act like super important like that, I'm like, man, if you're, if you're a diva now, you're going to be worse dealing yeah. with you. Just be humble. It's your story. You want to change lives. If you want to write a book to impact lives, you write a book to build your brand. 25% of companies 
have seen a, a uptick in business because they wrote a book. Books establish who you are. You could be smarter than the dumbest person next to you, but if he writes a book, he's the expert. Right, Is right. that crazy? So a lot of that stuff, I try to tell people, you know, write the book. Sometimes you don't make a lot of money with the book, but listen, maybe I, I've sold 10, 15, 20,000 selling books, but it opened up $100,000 worth of speaking engagements and it uh. birthed a million dollar business. That's what books do. Okay. They kind of build, like, like if you want to get rich just selling books, no, people not wanting to buy the book. They want to buy the experience. They want to buy the story. They want to buy everything around that right. book. And a lot of people say, hey, write the book, establish your brand, show who your company is, and now use that book as the ultimate calling card, the ultimate Yeah, because proposal. once you do have the book, you will get the the right uh, the speaking engagements. Exactly. And, uh, very interesting. Pretty. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, we've been getting a lot of local authors. Um, do they come with you with a book or with an idea? I. 90% of our authors come with an idea. Not a, not anything not written. A book. If, I mean, if we, if the, like David Bernard, we're doing a book with him. It's called Kidnapping Jesus About the Shroud. It's pretty cool. It's cool. like how they steal the, the, the shroud. Whatever. It's found. pretty cool. Like, yeah. I, I, can, I don't even have to pronounce the word. And then it just, it's like a, you know, a, a st then they do a DNA and recreate. Yeah, the one where they there's like radioactive yeah, yeah. image of his body. Exactly. And his, so that, uh, that's going to be a great story. That's coming. He, he's yeah. a local uh, entrepreneur. I think they own a turbine company. Uh, Nefi Moffat, you know, uh, uh, like a, uh, one of the top football players for FSU, uh, coached the Palm Bay Heritage. His book came out. Um, do you stick to just like motivational books or do you do like fiction? I would say 70% of my books are self help. Self help. Because yeah. that's what people write. Yeah. So, um, okay. Self help books, but we do. Fiction, nonfiction, children's books, religious books, political books. I don't choose preferences. I don't choose sides. I don't care. I publish a book. How long does it take you to know whether or not you want to hook up with this client? Like the first five minutes. The first five minutes. It's, I, I just, I just, that BS meter comes quick, right? You yeah. know, like, you're like, oh God. Because if they're, it, listen, 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 cheap is expensive. The authors I deal with that is like, oh no. And that's too much or they, they the ones that pay more demand less the ones yeah, that pay yeah. less demand more yep yeah is that w weird like and I, and I i treat you all the same but it's like wait you give me this much and you call me every day and yeah. then the ones that give me a lot more i i gotta find them so i think if you invest and, and it's not about the money it's just who you are and how much you're willing to invest in your brand. Right. You know, and if so. you believe in your formula, because it seems like you do have one. Yeah. You've developed it. How long have you been in this industry? Uh, good Lord, over 12 plus years. Yeah. To die on self be true. Like, narrow the focus of who you are. Like, I tell people, I'm conf when, I su when I see you on Instagram, who are you? Who's your brand? Yeah. You're all over the place. Yeah. Not, not you. I'm saying people. No, you I know? am too. Oh, I don't know if you... <laughs> <laughs> who, it, it's like you follow me, you know I do publishing. That's it. I like to motivate. Yeah. I like to be real. Uh, I'll, I'll speak on technology. AI is becoming very huge, so I'm getting invited on a lot of because um, there's going to be a lot of books that are going to be disbanded. Amazon sent out a, a press release like if your book is on AI, we're going to start taking it down. Yeah. That's what they you got to say you did. Yeah. Um. Um. So there's going to be a lot of there's a lot of these gurus like hey do a book in ten minutes. <laughs> If you could really write a book in 10 minutes, then... Then it's, it's probably not worth reading, right? It's been right? used before. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, let's see. Do you have any advice? I mean, you, you're you full of advice beyond publishing. I mean, that's what the... You're, I'm full... I, you know I'm full of advice? Because I'm full of failures. You know? Ah. I think I think failures are the best indicator of, uh, of wisdom. And if yeah. you don't learn from your failures, you, you're, you're bound to repeat them. So I think a lot of times people see... They think they have the success, but uh, there's a lot of mistakes you made, a lot of bad decisions, but you built from them. So I think true wisdom comes from that. You know, I like, like that. Yeah, like. Do you ever let your mistakes haunt you a little bit, though? You know, do you beat yourself? I up? don't dwell. I'm super positive, but yeah, I'm, I'm a human. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh, you know, well, why? Did why? You do that. What were you thinking? <laughs> you know, but um, but, but it's I, gotten to where you are. Yeah, don't take advice from people that haven't done it. It's funny, like people mm. want to give you advice. I get people want to like, give me advice on what I should do on my brand and but they don't do anything on their brand i'm like well i can't get it like yeah, well you need to do this but I, what do you like i like to take not to be disrespectful i like to take advice from up not down yeah 
That makes sense. I like to take advice from people that know more than me. Right? Now, don't get it twisted. There are people that know less than you but could give you some word of wisdom at that moment yeah. that you have to take. Like, they're children I learned from. Right. But it's like when it comes... So, I think just motivating people is like... I. I I said it on my uh, on one of my, my uh, the Larry Lawton, shout out to Larry Lawton podcast. Like, my teacher told me, man, Mr. Bucci, and I love her, uh, man, you, you, you're terrible at writing. You can't spell. Uh, I mean, I, I say I got ADHD. I, I've never been uh, diagnosed. Diagnosed, but I just know me. I'm like yeah. a, a squirrel. You talk to me and I just forget. So, <laughs> um, I just, but I've published books. And yeah. I didn't allow my limitations. Like, don't let anyone tell you it can't be done. People will try. Let me tell you, family members will try to. The first people, if you write a book, are going to want to freeze your family. You got no problem spending $10 at Starbucks buying a latte and a pastry, but you want me to give you a book for free to $10 that cost me thousands of dollars? Yeah. So, or, or, like, when I go to a friend's restaurant, I don't want your food for free. Right. Because no, I'm going go, to go to Carabas and pay them. Let me support you. So, yeah. You know, it's a problem with, 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 with people. They don't support their own people a lot right. of times. And that's that's the problem, right? They want it for free. They want, you know what, man? I'd rather just focus on people that, that most, it's funny, like most of my, my shine comes from people I don't know. No. That don't know me. Yeah. It's crazy. So it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. You because, know. you know, with success, you get the haters. If they listen, man, betrayal happens, only happens to people that know you. Yeah, I can't betray you if I don't know you. Right. So it's like, uh, but it's the best teacher, you know. Yeah. And, and it's good when they betray you early because now you know who they are. So. Right. But family members, I could stay. It happens. Fam, I love my family. Yeah. I can't, you know, and and I'm loyal to my boys, you know, and and but you know, a uh, family is, is is rough too, you know. Yeah. But it is what it is. It is. You and you know what? You on. know what? No one's perfect. We've made mistakes. Yeah. I must have done some bad decisions. I must have hurt people. So it's a it's a yeah. cyclical, vicious cycle. Are you on your podcast regularly? My I made the biggest mistake. You want to talk about mistakes? Yeah. My podcast hit top 50, top one fifty. It it is called the Peter Lopez No Excuses Podcast. I haven't done one in a in a while. Oh. I wanted to own my data at the time. Yeah. So I'm gonna I have to relaunch it. It became like it, my podcast was a ten minute rant oh. on whatever i wanted to that, i like that like uh, you, increment it, of time and and i think that would work for you because i don't know you just have so many little nuggets of even of now wisdom. the podcast that i haven't revived is still like well i feel like you're making content to, yeah anyway whether you're sitting in front of a microphone yeah. or just at your office your your page is full of good advice yeah. my pivot now is to take all my podcasts Turn it into YouTube shorts. I, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm verified on YouTube, and I haven't been on it. So I want to. I'm gonna pivot. You know, I. If you want to become an expert, write a book, and I'm an expert because I wrote a book on excuses. But I still make excuses. Of course. Like, it's like you know, my my. It's like you gotta get your podcast back up, and but it's a lot. Like it's, it's a, a lot, lot of energy. And the thing is, I don't want to be. Um, I thought at one point I was just forcing it. Uh, and the authenticity wasn't coming out. Right. Like, and if I don't do that, I don't want. No, need, I like, am not gonna do spark. anything. I'm not forced to do. I, I no is an answer. No yeah. one is gonna tell me. Like, I'm learning that this year. I, no, that no is an no, answer. Nope, I'm not doing it. You know, because I know you got now. Yes, I should, and I have to for my brand. Because I notice the more visible I am, the more it helps our company. Yeah. So that's 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 it. Crazy. Amazing. Um, I want to ask you one more thing. Uh, you know, you've come across the best of the best in Brevard, I'm sure. Who would you nominate to come on this show? I there's a few. There's a lady, um, Georgia. She's a uh, Grammy winner. I mean, Grammy nominee. She lost to uh, Elmo. Um, um, Get out of yeah, town. She, she has like little Elmo thing. Everyone kicks around. Great story. <laughs> she wrote a uh, composed a story about. Uh, her sister that passed away when she plays that piano you, I, you get like tears oh. and then uh, David Bernard his, his book is coming out he's a pretty cool guy um, you know there's there's a, there's a but like Nephi Moffat is pretty cool uh, he wrote a book about parenting cool. um, called Nephiisms there's a f I, I, and I'll these are all Brevard names. yes they're all from here amazing they're that's why all I love Brevard from there's here. hidden gems everywhere yeah. Mimi my business partner, she hates to be in the limelight. I told her she's got to be more public. Like she's a strong, strong leader, strong uh, businesswoman. 
But right. it sounds like you guys have a good yeah. yin and yang, That's right? It. You need somebody like that behind yeah. you, and she needs Deal you in all front my, of all my the ADD. camera. <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> it was so nice meeting you. Can you tell us where we can find you? You can find me. Uh, so uh, X P Lopez Jr. Uh, there's a bunch of ones, but this one is you'll see the verified one. Yeah, X is is my YouTube uh, Instagram uh, and LinkedIn. I'm very big. I, if you want to really establish a brand. You, you LinkedIn is LinkedIn. huge. I get most. I'm not on Facebook a lot, uh, but Peter Lopez on LinkedIn. Okay. And then uh, publifypress.com or peterlopezjr.com. You'll find me through all, all those medias. Send me an email. Today, if, if, if you guys, like, anyone sends us an email that they heard me on the show, I'll send them a free, like, template on how to get their book done or cool. something like that. Yes. All right, yes. authors out there. Yes. We got somebody in town that could help us. Yeah. Our local celebrity, Peter Lopez. Thank you so much for being here and Thank educating you. us. Hope to have you back someday. Yes, yes. We'll come back when, when uh, the robots take over the world <laughs> yes. and we have to hide here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Pleasure. To be a sponsor or nominate a guest, hit us up on Instagram at local underscore celebrity underscore Brevard. Until next time, goodbye.